Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Don Horgan. Just so you see my face before I put up the slides. Um, I work for the Tipperary Energy Agency. So please mute yourselves if you have not done already. And any questions that you may have, could you please put them in the chat box and we'll get to them at the end. Thank you. And welcome today to everybody, by the way. Okay, so today is it's the EUCF webinar for Irish uh, local authorities. Um, it's the online event. So the uh, agenda for today is a summary of what is the EUCF, um, what is an investment concept, and then we'll go into a bit more details of um, how to apply to the EUCF calls. Um, the expected IT project journey, and then the support for beneficiaries, supports available from the EUCF examples of success stories, and then there'll be some time for some, um, for some Q&A. Um, so again, my name is Owen Horrigan. I am the EUCF country expert for Ireland. Um, my role in the Tipperary Energy Agency is as a community energy engineer. I work a lot with organizations like Tipperary County Council, NGOs, various sustainable energy communities and the public and private sector. We have a dedicated EUCF email address, but I believe it's not set up yet. Um, but please email me at own at tipenergy.ie for any assistance on your journey uh, with us. So it's my role as the country expert to support you with your application process and beyond. So if you need me, please send me an email and we can set up a one-to-one -one Zoom call to discuss your project ideas. Um, also, I want to make you aware that this presentation has been recorded and this webinar will be available on a YouTube link that will be sent out as part of this webinar. Okay, so the introduction, what is the EUCF? The barriers that have been recognized in financing sustainable projects, and I'm sure you'll agree, uh, often in local authorities or municipalities, is that you have limited human resources or capacity to actually put the time and effort in that's required to develop these project ideas and actually come up with an investment concept as such. There is also a conservative approach to project finance. There is often a lack of experience in local authorities and municipalities in terms of developing investment packages. And there is also a reluctance to put the money in to bring in a consultant to develop this. Also can be the difficulty of matching elections and investment cycles. So for this round, the EUCF will be funding 24 investment con concepts in our region. Our region is a North and West European region and it's there in the, the dark blue areas on the map. This call was launched on the 15th of October and the deadline is the 17th of December. So it's not a long way off. You have approximately uh, four weeks to get in your application, um, get it together and get your project sorted. The fourth and final call for this, for this program will be in the spring of 2022. So don't worry if it's not possible to submit an application for this call, for the third call, you have plenty of time to prepare for the fourth and the final call early in 2022. So to define our region, which is the Nordic countries and the Western Europe are the countries of Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Iceland, Ireland, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, and Britain. The available budget for this third call in our region is 1.44 million with 24 applications um, for selection. So just to, just to bring it home again, this is the third call, um, which is opened from the 15th to the 17th of December. And the fourth and final call will be in, will be in the spring of 2022. Okay, so the aims and objectives. Um, 
Okay, so going on the, the basics and fundamentals of what this European city facility is, the aims of the EU city facility is to provide technical, legal and financial expertise to local authorities and to municipalities to deliver at least 225 investment concepts in the EU within the four calls. Excuse me. And we are on the third call today which should trigger more than 320 million of public and private investment. It's envisioned that it will also build capacity of at least 450 public authority staff to develop substantial project pipelines. It will also facilitate access for local authorities to private finance, EU funding streams and similar facilities and advisory services to realize and to amplify the expected investments especially for small and medium-sized local authorities. The EUCF, using the successful investment concepts and knowledge generated, is expected to reach out to more than 10,000 cities and communities, encouraging replication and catalyzing further action across Europe. So for example, um, results of the first call, there were 250 plus applications from 28 countries. Uh, the results of it were that there was 30 beneficiaries from 14 countries um, having been successful in their applications from this part and getting approval to receive their grant. So this spread, so the spread of the of those countries um, that were awarded in the first call, only four applications got submitted from Ireland. Um, Ireland was not successful in the second call leader. So going around the clock, we have the UK, Denmark, Lithuania, Poland, Hungary, Croatia, Bulgaria, Malta, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, um, and Britain. So they all were successful um, with the EUCF application process um, for their investment concepts. We still have to get on the map. So I suppose um, just looking at what was the percentage share um, of different types of projects in the investment concepts pot. So um, the largest share was 19%, which was from building integrated renewables. So this was mostly integrating solar PV panels. At 16% is innovation energy infrastructure. 15% came from public buildings, 13% from residential buildings involving residential retrofits, 11% from district heating projects, 11% from other sectors, 8% um, from sustainable mobility, and 7% from smart grid. So that's the general breakdown of what type of projects um, are moving forward. And I suppose just to look into the 16%, which is the innovative energy infrastructure, those type of projects include the use of geothermal energy and power um, generating from a steam turbine, installation of uh, CHPs, combined heat and power, using wood chip material, a sewage treatment plant that was powered by renewable energy, uh, use of water and sewage networks as an energy storage, and then um, microscale liquefaction processing using purification and biogas upgrading and biomethane liquefaction. And I suppose bringing, bringing um, some examples close to home in Coventry in the UK uh, was a smart solar PV integrated electric charging hubs and sustainable mobility for an industrial district. So there are some of the, some of the projects. So um, Ireland has not won any call thus far. Hopefully we can get strong representation for the third and fourth calls from yourselves going forward. So you can see there on the map of Europe, um, the spread of, um, of winning countries and how many um, investment concepts were won from each country. Okay, so the EU added value activities are to maximize the impact and financial leverage of individual projects. They want to promote aggregation opportunities by region and technology. 
the aggregation concept we are hearing a lot about in the EU. And it is very, it is very much the future of energy efficiency. We hear about it all the time from the SEI and the national level. Aggregation is the, it will be the key to getting projects done at scale and economically, making an impact on climate change. Further goals of the EUCF are to create links between cities and the investor community, facilitate EU-wide activities with cities getting networking going between different local authorities from different EU countries. So what is an investment concept? What is this? What is the investment concept? Um, essentially, an investment concept is a development of a project that you might have a high level concept for. What this investment concept is, is to develop this idea into a very well documented investment or business decision or proposal. Um, and that this decision proposal would have the backing of all the professional services that are required to give it weight. So really, it's something that you could go to the banquet. It's a, it's, it's a bankable proposal. This is the end result and where you would need to get to. But to start the application for the EUCF, you need to know, um, for example, what your project is or might be and what are the components required and what needs to get this done so that you could go to a financer with this and say, we're looking for finance for this project. So what is the structure of an investment concept? The structure of an investment concept is, um, well, well, first of all, there is a summary of the planned investment. So your total investment planned. There is your funding sources and the location of the planned investment. Um, is it a municipality or local authority or a grouping targeted like a Cairo, for example? Then an overview and objectives of the investment with the estimated costs and revenues, the economic viability and expected impacts. So basically you have five parts to the template, which is part of the application process. So you kind of have to think ahead of what you need to fund with the potential 60,000 grant um, you might get. Again, your structure is um, just kind of, if you look at the structure of the template there, Number one is description of the planned investment project. Who are the promoters and who are the, the local stakeholders? What legal analysis needs to be carried out? Who is that consultant and how much do they cost? Number four is the economic and financial analysis. Um, would you need some sort of a business consultant as well? Question mark, question mark. Um, and number five is the investment roadmap. roadmap. Okay, so I'm going to, I'll, I'll skip these um, as they are in more detail and have been covered by my colleague previously in uh, webinars for call one and two, that's up on YouTube. I can e either email the links out to you or have, um, or have a look yourselves and these slides will be made available to you anyway. Okay, like I said, this is the third call and there will be a fourth and final call in the spring um, of next year, 2022. Okay, so the, what is the, the EUCF journey for you? Sorry. Okay. I suppose we are slipping out of phase one and into phase two. Uh, this is where we are now. We are in the application phase now, which is phase two. And firstly, you need to decide if your local authority is eligible to apply for this. There is an eligibility criteria, which we will go through in a minute. Most of the process is just a tick box questionnaire, like, yes, we are, and tick the box, um, et cetera, et cetera. But there is one or two of the tick box questions you'll have to take note of and make sure to have all the documentation. And you need to make sure you have the buy-in and the political commitment, which you need to state. That's very important. So there is the eligibility check first and foremost, which will define if you are eligible to apply before you go any further. And then there is the full application. 
So as I've stated, the first screening is the eligibility check phase. Um, next is the full application phase that needs to be delivered before the 17th of December at 5 p.m. Brussels time, which is 4 p.m. Dublin time. And then you move on to the grant agreement phase. We are here to help you through the grant agreement phase um, when you do get there. There is about a two month, there is about two months of signing of contracts um, to be done here, et cetera. And after that is stage four, where you are given 12 months to complete the investment concept, thereby developing your idea into something concrete and real. At this stage, you are practically ready to take your proposal to any potential investor at the end of this 12 months. Step five, the implementation of the investment concept. Um, you don't have to actually implement this concept, uh, but there is some monitoring of the investment concept over the 24 months. So there is no onus on you that you have to do the implementation part. They won't take back the grant. And so, and so that you know, you get 70% of the payment of the grant once step three is complete and the remainder 30% once you have delivered the investment concept at the end of stage four. Okay, so what is the overall application procedure? So up to, so I suppose just where we are now. So to summarize, step one, do your eligibility check. Answer yes to all five requirements, and then you proceed to step two. Step two, complete the full application form and all supporting documents. From this, the best scored applicants will be selected and proceed to the grant agreement stage. Okay, so who will qualify to receive EU CF support? Question one, <laughs> the eligibility check. Well, first, are you a local authority? Well, yes, you are. Um, I'm assuming that most um, of you here are. Question two, is your local authority located in the EU 27 block? Answer is yes. The next two questions are kind of the tricky ones. Um, question three is like, does your local authority have a politically approved um, SEEP, which is a sustainable energy action plan or a CCAP? which is a sustainable energy action and climate plan or a plan of similar ambition. An example of a plan of similar ambition that they accept in round one and more likely accept in round two would be the likes of an energy master plan from one of your towns in your county. So that would be a plan of similar ambition. So what they're looking for is that they want to know what your energy baseline is in terms of gigawatt hours or units of energy. They want to know what your action plan is and what your reduction target is. They want to know what is your target plan towards the implementation of renewable energy in your area. So I suppose, um, so anybody who would have gone through the covenant of mayors um, will have developed uh, a SEEP, which is the first one, um, which is a sustainable energy action plan. A lot of those uh, would have been dated up to 2020, which was a target year, and they are still ex accepting those, even though uh, we're now in late of 2021. Um, so they are still accepting them as being applicable in your application. Okay, so that's the big one, and that's the big hurdle. Um, and as every local authority has a climate adaptation strategy that may or, be, or not, that may or may not be um, eligible, so if you have a plan of similar ambition, please send it on to me and I can get it reviewed by the team in Brussels so that you will know if you're eligible to apply for this. Um, the next question that they look for is proof of political commitment. So these sustainable energy action plans or climate action plans, they are all signed off by your local county council or mayor of your county or city. So you do need to prove that there is um, a sign off of this plan as well. So that's something to keep in mind also. Um, and then everybody will commit to the EUCF monitoring period of two years. 
So it's the two middle ones here that might cause difficulty as you may not have them or might have to do a bit of work to get them to the point where they are eligible for the scheme. But again, I suppose we, we are here to assist you um, in those things. So uh, yeah, again, you have the full application form and supporting documentation to be submitted. And this slide is just, I suppose, it's just a repeat of what I've um, just said. So I, I'll move it on there. Okay, so which information has to be provided in the application form? Very important question. Information like population size. That's important because that feeds into your scoring index uh, for your evaluation. The title of the investment concept and the allocation of the grant amount also needs to be defined. You need to know what you're going to do with the 60,000, for example, who you're going to spend this, um, who you're going to spend the money on. I suppose just have a good think of how best to spend the 60,000 uh, grant. What activities are you going to fund for the grant amount? And then there is the governance for the investment concept development and engagement of stakeholders. This is your implementation. This is important as well, as this forms part of the evaluation criteria. The investment sector is targeted, the intended measures, expected size of investment, and it's not just the size of the investment that they look at, they look at this in relation to the population size also. Um, can everybody mute, please? Um, so they, they are trying to make you as ambitious as possible for the size of the local authority that you are. It kind of does favor rural local authorities um, once you are ambitious in your rural local authority. So next is the expected impacts. And that is all your energy savings provided for or inputted as part of your application process using Excel templates and the potential for replication and our upscaling. All of these points are things that they will look at in depth in your application and will score you on. So please take special consideration with these sections when you are completing your application. So which activities are funded by the EUCF grant? So these could be typically feasibility studies, engineering analysis, legal analysis, social studies, market studies, financial analysis, etc. The allocation of money could be for uh, in-house staff and also for external experts and subcontractors. What has to be considered when applying as a grouping? So a grouping is led by one lead applicant and it has to be a local authority. And it could be a group of local authorities. And they encourage this method. They want you to work together. So uh, a natural aggregate, and so ex excuse me. So they want you to work together. So a natural aggregation would be the likes of a Cairo structure. And if there were projects across various local authorities in one Cairo group, for example, um, I suppose that is an organic structure in the development of the Kairos in the last couple of years. But once, a local, but, but once a grouping of local authorities is formed, then it's legit, but you will only get one uh, 60,000 euro uh, per grouping. So you need to know where the money is going to go um, with the grouping that you create. Very important. Okay, so how are the applications evaluated? I have a, a whole section on this, so I will skip through this for now and we'll, we'll hit it in depth a little bit later. Um, and yeah, you have to submit the following as well as part of your application. So in the Annex A section is a CCAP or SEEP, or Plan of Similar Ambition. Annex B, Letter of Support, um, which will be from a political representative. Annex C is a self-declaration by a representative of the municipality or the local authority. Appendix D is your, 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 your workbook, um, your calculation logs of expected energy savings and appendix e is your calculation log um, which is the expected size of your investment okay so 
I suppose we'll delve into the details around the evaluation. So there is a fantastic resource to read to assist you with your application process, and we will email it out to you promptly. Um, it's on the EUCF website. The, the document is called D2.3. It's the methodology and criteria for scoring and rating of applications. And I suppose I'll be kind of quoting from pages 11 and 16 um, going, going forward for the next few slides. So in this document, this document is, a, is, a, is, is gold for your application process because I suppose there has been a lot of feedback from the evaluators um, to what they are looking for as an investment concept. So this is page 12 of the D2.3 document. And basically you have your investment size and energy savings as really the quantifiable parts to your application. The rest of your application is really about the way you write your application and the particular language that you use when writing it. But the investment size and energy savings are really set in stone um, in terms of the euro value of your project and the kilowatt hour value of your savings that you're going to generate. So coupled with this, you have to submit all your supporting documentation. There is an Excel um, worksheet to fill out for the A1 investment size and the A2 energy savings. Yeah, for the A2 energy saving sections. Uh, there are three tabs in the Excel worksheet that you have to fill out. Um, and you have to fill out the entirety of this worksheet and upload this file in its own right so that the entire Excel file is given to the evaluators because they will do their due diligence of the pricing that you say your project is going to cost. So basically, if you take a, a quick look at this investment, um, at, at this investment size criteria, they essentially, they essentially do a sanity check and do their due diligence. And then what they actually do is compare your project proposal um, to the local context. And basically your project is compared to, to the other applications in the region. Your project uh, will be stacked up and scored against um, every other project. So one, it'll be stacked up against the investment size. And number two, uh, it'll be stacked up against the energy savings achieved when compared to the other applications in the Northwest uh, European region. So the information provided in the supporting documents and calculations is highly comprehensible and plausible. Also when taking into account the local context, uh, such as the population number of the local authority, the investment size is highly ambitious. Uh, I suppose moreover, the, the pooling and bundling of smaller investment is proposed if it's feasible to the context. That's why they are looking, uh, that's what they're looking for in terms of being highly ambitious in terms of scoring um, the highest marks in this weighing. So if you go down to the bottom of that slide, for example, um, and you can see the zero here in the points, it's just up from the five, um, they state that no information has been provided or this amount is not realistic and are inconsistent with other responses. So that will give you zero marks. I'll send you on the link to this document and it is well worth reading to get a good grounding on how to apply to get the best scoring uh, if you're considering in putting in an application. The next part then, which is uh, the 8.2, is the energy savings. So again, um, your expected energy savings generated needs to be submitted. First of all, they will do their due diligence of the savings you enter into the Excel sheet. Also, the Excel sheet has a number of tabs. Again, they want the full Excel sheet returned and not just the summary sheet, which is the first tab, as they want to see your calculations and also how you came up with the figures and what methodology, um, methodology you used in your energy engineering calculations. So the expected energy savings generated by the planned investment project are highly ambitious in relation to other submitted applications in the regional call. The method and result um, in the calculation logs are highly comprehensible and plausible um, in line with corresponding benchmarks. Also when taken into account the local context, such as the baseline and what 
And that is why you need your C or CCAP and population numbers of the local authority. The amount of energy savings generated is highly ambitious. And that is how you would score a five there. So they add the scoring of the A1 and A2, which is the investment size and the energy savings together. And this is weighed against the investment concepts in all other countries in the region. So I suppose I, I just said I put this in to show you um, the weighing of A1 and A2, and I suppose the general weights of the evaluation uh, criteria section. So the evaluation scoring can be viewed on page 10 of the D2.3 document um, that I will send you all. So the scoring of A1 and A2, for example, is added together and weighed against all the other countries' applications. And the full scores of the A1 investment size, A2 energy savings, B1 governance structure, B2 stakeholder engagement, and B3 alignment with the EU CF objectives are weighed and added together and compared against other applications in your EU CF region. So that's how they, that's, that's the scoring logic that they apply. And basically um, what they are looking for in section B1 in the governance structure, um, I suppose this is the, the flurry part of the application. The application will present um, the internal organization or the application, excuse me, the, uh, the application will present the, inter the internal organizational structure and decision making process for the development of the investment concept. The roles and responsibilities of all people involved um, are to be clearly defined, including names, positions, and departments. The identification of the persons in charge of the development of the investment concept and the comprehensive explanation and or illustration of the relationships and interactions between the people involved. Uh, the application should also clearly highlight the people with the decision-making power and explains the process and format on how decisions are taken. Um, moreover, it is clearly explained if internal capacities are sufficient and how the, EE, how the internal team ensures the successful development of the investment concept or if, the, or if external experts should be involved and how they are able to provide a value added, including possible roles potential activities and areas for capacity building. So again, please take note of capacity building. Um, capacity building is one of the objectives of this EU CF scheme and knowing what to look out for in the language is very important for a strong application. I.e., how are you building on your technical, financial and support structures, et cetera, moving forward. And again, just jumping a few pages to page 15 of the D2.3, which is um, B2 stakeholder engagement. Now, I'm not going to read all of this, um, just to say that it does give you some really good tips here on what they are looking for. Like, the main stakeholders have been clearly identified, including a description of the stakeholder groups and their relationship to the planned investment concept, the corresponding needs, expectations and importance of success towards the planned investment project through a stakeholder map. I, su I suppose so I can see that there is a lot more information there now than in previous calls and this is really evident of, um, of what they're looking for. We would have given a lot of feedback as country experts to what kind of information should be given out from the evaluators um, to know what exactly they are looking for. So this is invaluable information for yourselves. And finally is section B3, alignment with the EU CF objectives. And this is on page 16 of the, 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 of the D2.3 document, which, which as I stated, I will, I will send out to you all. Um, and I suppose always tie everything back to what they want is the key here. So the ultimate objective is to build a sustainable pipeline of sustainable energy investment projects. And again, the wording of capacity building is here again. 
of local authority staff to provide hands-on locally rooted technical and financial expertise and to deliver credible and scalable investments and to facilitate ac access, especially for small to medium municipalities or local authorities to private finance. That is why I was saying that the more rural local authorities might score better um, and to use the successful knowledge of the EUCF uh, beneficiaries to reach out and to replicate. Again, the word replicate is very important. Um, and I suppose just some context for ourselves, uh, whenever we do uh, EU project applications in the agency, and I'm sure it's the same with three counties and Codema as well, they're all about replication and how the learning of these projects can be fully utilized and replicated in other areas in Ireland, for example, or in the EU and sustained in the long term. So that is what I wanted to wanted to talk to you about in this section. Um, I will send you out the link to this resource to assist you on your journey with your applications. And again, it's a great document to reference for this call um, as the diffusion of knowledge from the evaluators um, as to what they're looking for, for a strong application is in the document. I suppose the devil is in the detail um, is the old, is, is, is the cliche. Okay. Um, so now on, on to the final bit of the workshop for today. I hope I'm not going too fast. Um, I hope I didn't go too fast for anybody that wouldn't be too familiar with the scheme. Um, I know I did fly through the first part and the detail in the middle. Um, and the detail in the middle, I hope, was not too deep for anybody, especially for people coming to this for the first time. I am going to be available for one-to-one -one sessions if anybody wants them. And if people want any support um, in discussions, of any of your project ideas in terms of um, maybe, you know, me helping you through your application process and maybe doing a review before the final submission so I can help in the, in the application process if anybody wants it, that's what I'm here for. Okay, so, um, so now we go through some of the success stories. Um, I will go through three success stories of three countries that did receive the EU CF call, um, the EU CF in, in the first call. So I suppose this will give you um, uh, a snapshot of kind of what projects um, got accepted. So the three are from um, so the three are from three different countries. One is from Belgium, Croatia, and Spain. Uh, the one from Croatia had to do with uh, district heating systems in public buildings. The one from Belgium is probably the most impressive, um, and it's also really, really, really ambitious. So don't get put off by the Belgium one in terms of scale, as the two we will talk about, the, uh, the Spanish and the Croatian ones, are probably more in kind of in line with the applications from Ireland, uh, potentially. So in terms of Brussels, um, you are basically looking at a lead partner with 18 municipalities of Brussels that they are all tied with. So it is really significant. It, it, it is a really significant project um, with 1.2 million citizens. So they developed the investment concept for retrofitting of public buildings in the 19 municipalities in total. So this is the, I suppose, the, the stakeholder map. Um, so this is the governance structure that they brought into their application. They have a lead partner, a steering committee. And if you look at the top uh, left, you will see that they have representation from the Minister of Energy and an energy agency also in Brussels. They also have uh, an inter-municipal cooperative they have um, a subcontractor, excuse me, and a technical and a technical committee. And they also have a lot of players in this network. So they were they're pretty organized. So what were the main objectives of this investment uh, project? They have targets here, which they have taken from their own CCAPs, uh, from, from their own CCAP to reduce 
greenhouse gas emissions by 40% by 2030, to have achieved carbon neutrality by 2050, have a final energy saving of 21% by 2030, and have over 1,170 gigawatt hours per year of renewable energy available to them by 2030. And they're moving towards energy neutrality for public buildings by 2040. So there was a clear link between the goals um, from their CCAP and the actions that they put forward for their investment concept idea. So there is a link. So like it's like it's much more than just having a document written um, that ticks a box like a, like a CCAP. It, it is much more than that because you can pull your actions from the CCAP into your EU CF application. And this is an opportunity uh, to maybe mobilize one or many of those actions from your own CCAP, for example. So it was clear from their CCAP um, that there is a move towards energy neutrality for public buildings um, by 2040. So um, what were the planned activities for the investment concept development? So the activities that were planned were to look at the deep energy retrofit of public buildings in areas of HVAC, building fabric, renewable energy, and lighting. These two programs seemed to be some kind of regional program um, the NR Click program looks like an energy, some sort of an energy monitoring and accounting uh, program for energy use, like uh, MNV. And the Solar Click program seems to be some kind of solar PV platform that one can join that offers various services. So they have partnered with these programs, and I don't really know if they are government led programs or some other type of structure. I, I think they are some kind of government led program. Um, and then they are the follow-up service that provide maintenance for HVAC, renewable energy and lighting systems, energy savings monitoring, and personalized or shared services provided by a one-stop shop for audit, engineering activities, fundraising, contracting, and controlling works and results monitoring. So I suppose what was developed there was a full and costed roadmap um into 2040 across 19 municipalities so what are the expected impacts of the investment project for for this brussels um grouping so here are the expected values from 2040 with the end of the investment program so what is interesting here is that they were getting the money to develop a roadmap up to 2040 and they were not looking at a small scale project to get completed in three or six months, for example. So they were successful because the, the development uh, of this roadmap um, is over many, many years. So final energy savings of 197 gigawatt hours per year, um, approximately 46,000 tons per year of CO2 to be avoided and renewable energy production of 13 gigawatt hours per year. And they've stated that there is a budget of 886 million euros going to be available up to 2040, which is, it's, it's, it's a massive project. It's a massive scale. And then, so um, what will they use the EUCF grant for? So the grant will be used by the intermunicipal cooperative to hire an external expert as the project manager in charge of developing the investment concept. So really they have used the 60,000 to pay for a project manager. And that project manager has all of the following under, um, under its remit. And this is tied into what the EUCF evaluators were looking for, which are the legal analysis, economic and financial analysis, project portfolio management, and the organizational concepts.
So just looking at the financial sources uh, for this project, they envisage that financing will come from the European Investment Bank, from municipalities and local authorities, ESCOs and private banks. Anybody could say that they could potentially, anybody could say that they could be potential investors. I thought that they were pretty smart uh, also in the way that they used um, the money and didn't limit themselves in, in just a one-off project. Also involved again in this project are the 19 municipalities, uh, it's a, re a regional authorities and the Minister of Energy and Business Environment are the stakeholders. Okay, so I suppose, um, what was the feedback from the evaluators? So what did they get from, um, from their evaluators in the form of feedback? Okay, so they were told that they have a strong impact of the investment concept on the energetic improvement of the public building stock. Okay, and that the expected investment size is very ambitious due to the grouping application. So that's with the 19 municipalities. They were told that there is a potential replication of the investment concept in Brussels and other European cities of similar size and that the governance structure is a robust internal organizational structure for the development of the investment concept. And that it clearly defines the roles and responsibilities of all actors involved. So there is one, so this is one example of an acceptable application um, that funds one staff member to develop the roadmap to 2040. So another success example is from Croatia, um, which is a bit more on a smaller scale and I suppose could be aligned in size with what has been and could be submitted from Ireland. Okay, so um, they looked at an urban area of 32,000 citizens consisting of three different geographical areas within the project boundary. Now, I won't even attempt to do Croatia and injustice by trying to pronounce those areas, but you can see there in the blue, green and orange, um, the areas were like wet meadows, um, central and uh, a mostly in inhabited part, uh, lowlands with rich agricultural soil and uh, a hilly southern woodlands um, that was 230 meters above sea level. Uh, so the background, um, so basically the background to the application was that they knew that there is a high potential for the use of biomass and solar energy in the area. They also have an existing district heating grid in operation using natural gas and the city has a CCAP and a plan for utilization of solar energy in public buildings. So there was a clear link again between the sea the CCAP or an energy master plan to what you're going to put in with your EUCF application. So the project idea is that the project would cover the three settlements in the area. It would involve a deep retrofit of over 1000 houses and three public buildings. 1.8 megawatt peak of rooftop solar would be installed. Um, a four megawatt biomass heating plant and a 5.5 megawatt YMS heating plant would be installed um, with a heating grid, with a district he heating grid also to be installed. And what was their feedback? The feedback that they got from their evaluator was that the expected investment size and energy savings are ambitious in relation to other applications in the regional call and to the local context. They produce their energy savings, renewable energy production targets and CO2 reduction targets with a total investment of circa 23 million euros. Just be mindful that as engineers, we sometimes can fall into the trap of focusing um, on the calculations and neglecting the more flowery parts of these applications like the governance parts, um, which are also very important with these applications. 
So the feedback states that the governance structure is well addressed, including the roles and responsibilities of the people involved, as well as their positions and departments. The decision-making process uh, is clear and relationships between all actors has been well established. It is clearly explained that internal capacities will not be sufficient and it is detailed with what will be the added value of external experts involved. It defines the clear description of implementing um, department, definition of the chain of responsibilities, outline of the potential partners in the implementation. The applications already provided um, first estimation for additional impacts as well as Again, replication and upscaling potential, very important. So again, the evaluators are interested in the replication and upscaling potential of, the, of this um, and these investment concepts. So defined upscaling potential within the local area, estimated potential investment of over 250 million, um, 23 million, I, I'm sorry, a existing expression of interest from several additional local and regional governments. So they would have, uh, so they would have provided a lot of supporting information to back up their application and maybe the flurry stuff as well, which is good to do. Oh, sorry, yes, uh, the estimated potential investment of over 250 million euros. My apologies. Um, I'm not too sure how to pronounce uh, this city's name, uh, Rekeve. So it's the capital city of another area of Croatia. So just some context, com context, it's a coastal city and home to Croatia's largest port. So um, again, the background and application. So they knew from their analysis or their C CCAP or energy master plan and analysis that there was a large potential for the use of solar energy and waste. The city has an existing district heating grid. The city has a sea cap. The city, uh, the district heating operator applied for an ITI grant. Now I'm not too sure what an ITI grant is to be honest. Um, and the project idea and concept is the utilization of ultra high temperature hydrolysis to convert waste into a syn gas fuel. So this syn gas fuel would be used in energy production and transport production of electricity and thermal energy for district heating, with also the production of hydrogen from excess electricity from renewable sources, um, I am assuming. So feedback. So again, good feedback uh, for the investment of 78 million euros. The governance is well described. The stakeholders are all listed and the time schedule is well appreciated. Also defined is the definition of the chain of responsibilities, a clear outline for the timeline, or, uh, sorry, a, a clear outline for the time frame of the individual steps towards the completion of the investment concept, and an outline of the potential partners and stakeholders in the implementation. Moreover, the application is well aligned with the EUCF objectives, so well defined as a project that can be replicated and upscaled and gives an idea how the project could be potentially replicated and or upscaled. Also delivered was explicit link to the potential of replication in other EU medium-sized cities and the potential for the replication of the technical and the planning processes. Okay, so the last um, successful application that we'll review is from Spain. So this project was to do with home retrofits. So the objective uh, is to scale up the refurbishment of residential buildings in uh, Girona, with at least 10% of retrofitted properties having installed at least three kilowatt peak of solar PV primarily on rooftops. And it's to develop um, a municipal-led one-stop shop for this project. The scope of the investment concept further included to facilitate the interaction between all the actors involved in the retrofit process and the grouping of kind of six sub-cities within, within that area, um, maybe six smaller cities, city areas within the city were involved. So 
So the investment concept was going to pay for a feasibility study or feasibility studies to determine the impact, the HR requirements, and the cost benefits of creating that one-stop shop. The impact would produce around 2.4 gigawatt hours per year of renewable energy, provide energy savings uh, of 30 gig gigawatt hours per year, with an overall investment of 106 million euros, and reducing greenhouse gas emissions by circa 9,000 tons of CO2 per year. Um, the successful factors in this application were uh, the investment size and energy savings were highly ambitious, clearly defined governance structure and decision making and coordination. Additional impacts as employment was defined and the grouping to support each other and being ambitious and the plan to reach higher goals. So that was that's the feedback from the evaluators for that project that got grant aided. Oh, sorry, uh, there's one more. Okay, so I have another uh, success story here from Malaga in Spain. So the objectives of this investment concept um, are the creation of photovoltaic solar parks in large urban areas, which use uh, PPAs, power purchase agreements. The investment concept provided a detailed investment plan that would support the specialized technical team that was behind the investment concept and to come up with the technical plan and to fund the technical work that needed to be done. The impact would be that they would produce around 36.5 megawatt hours per year of renewable energy, provide energy savings of 54 gigawatt hours per year with a total investment of over 33 million um, euros and reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 16,000 tons per year. So there are the examples of um, the success stories on this application um, path for the EUCF. Um, so it's the bigger picture, I suppose. Um, for example, this fund could be used to assist you in generating your roadmap for your own 2030 targets, for example, in terms of your local authority. So you could be able to quantify your energy use fairly okay because you would have your own MNR data. Um, so it could be the development of those projects and what you are going to do, or it could be the decarbonization. But maybe it's a good idea to think a little uh, about the bigger picture because like, this is not a project that needs to happen in a year or two. They want a pipeline of projects ideally, like for example, in, in Leash or Sligo. Um, so I hope it's a little bit clearer for you now. And I feel that there is a lot more information going into this call than in previous ones. But I think that it gives everyone um, an even playing field so to speak, <coughs> excuse me. So the next steps, um, so please, please, please contact me if you have any questions around your eligibility or your project. Um, there are one-to-one -one sessions available. Um, we can do a sense check of your application, data checks, et cetera, prior to submission. So again, I'm here for you. I am on at tipenergy.ie and I'm, I'm here to, um, to support your successful applications. So um, thank you very much. And I suppose I think we're probably uh, nearly on time um, for if there's any questions um, that you might have. So so thank you very much for your time. I can't really see the, the chat box, so maybe um, Colin, you might see if there's any questions there. Uh, nothing in yet. Anyway, Owen, uh, okay. just give it a minute or two there. Uh, if anyone does have a question, pop it in now, or else you can unmute yourself and ask as well. Yeah, perfect, yeah. So, um, look, there's Ireland hasn't scored yet with a successful application, so we have the third call now. We have the fourth call in the spring. Um, so I, I, I'd encourage you um, to get in contact if you need any assistance with your, with your applications. It's, uh, 
it's a fantastic um, 60k to have in your pocket for for your projects going forward, especially you know if you want to focus on the, on on your 2030 uh, targets. Yeah, I'd say we can uh, draw a close here, so and it doesn't look like there's any questions. Okay, that's great, and thank you for everybody for your time. Um, and as I said, I'm available on at tipenergy.ie. So, and I'll send out that D two point three um, document to you all, and this webinar will be up on YouTube as well. And I, I, I think Colin will will send out the link to that. So, yeah. thank you very much for your time, and stay safe. Bye bye.